Hi everyone, in this video we're going to look at how to use MakeCaraCam's 3D toolpath features to create a three-dimensional relief on a 3D mesh file like this STL file I have of this little dog feature. Now what a 3D relief is, is it allows you to create a complex and three-dimensional carving around a three-dimensional model file like the pirate ship example we provide with both the Carvera and Carvera Air desktop CNC. To create a 3D relief, you need a 3D mesh file like this STL file format. And by the nature of STL files, you can't select the individual faces of them. So you couldn't typically use a pocket toolpath or a drilling toolpath, a 3D pocket or 3D drilling toolpath with an STL file. We would typically use a step file for those as we show in our other tutorials and guides. But what we can do is we can create a 3D relief that will automatically follow the individual and unique contours of both convex and concave within your designs to machine this part out of your material. So let's dive in. I've selected my model here and I'm going to create a 3D relief toolpath. And the first options we have are to set our cutting depths. And you would typically start at the surface of your stock at zero, unless you want to start within or above the stock, which you could do. And you also have an option for max depth, which we'll dive into later on. Then we have our clearance heights, which you don't necessarily need to change unless you are working around a specific clamp or fixture that you might have on your bed. And then of course you can select your tools. And like any pocket toolpath, we can actually select more than one tool here if we want to create a roughing and finishing pass. So I'm going to first delete the tool that was there previously and then select a single flute end mill for metal. And this is a larger tool that I might use for clearing out my material to create a roughing pass. You'll see that the cutting properties were automatically set to brass based upon the stock that I've chosen earlier for this project. And here I can choose to change any of the default feeds and speeds if I'd like to deviate from the defaults, which you could do if you want to make any custom adjustments. One thing to immediately consider are the step downs. And whenever you're creating a roughing pass where you're removing quite a bit of material to actually cut to the surface of your design, we always recommend that you enable step downs, which will mean that the bit won't just plunge straight to the design, it will gradually remove material pass by pass. And again, the default step down of 0.1 is based upon the bit that I've chosen and based upon my stock material set to be brass. If you're working with a softer material, you can remove more material per pass than you could with a harder material like metal. You can also change any of the other feed and speeds if you'd like, as well as assign a different tool number if you have this tool located in a specific slot on your Carvera's automatic tool changer, or to ensure that it's not assigned to be the same number as another tool that you might be using. Next, we have our processing strategies. And what you need to determine is, are you creating a relief based upon your model, based upon your material, or based upon a selected vector if you had, let's say, an outline within your design, a contour within your design? Now, what model will do is it will mean that the bit will only machine up to the edges or the boundary of your model. What material does is it will clear out the material all the way up to the entire material, your stock here. And of course, you can change the size of your stock to be tighter or looser around your model. And again, what vector would do is it would actually allow you to select an individual vector, like a two-dimensional line. And you can create vectors using the simple create tools that we look at more in our other guides. I'm going to keep this to be set to be the model boundary, mean that I'm going to clear out material based upon the model of the mesh that I've imported here. You then have your path strategies. Offset will follow the specific contours within your design, while parallel will just pan back and forth. And with release, we typically use a parallel toolpath, though you could change it to offset when you're doing a finishing pass, depending on how you want the material to be cleared. You can set the direction of clearing as well as an angle of clearing if you'd like and choose between climb or conventional milling. You then have to consider your tool containment. And like your model boundary, the tool containment will determine how far the tool can actually pass. Inside boundary means that the tool will not be permitted to leave the boundary of the model that I've selected here. Outside boundary means that the tool will be permitted to go past the edges of the model to clear out around the perimeter. And on boundary means that the tool will not be permitted to go past the actual boundary of your model. If you're clearing an inside relief where you don't want to affect any of the areas around, you would typically choose inside boundary or on boundary. If you plan on cutting this part out later where you want to clear not only the part that you've selected, but actually also remove it using a contour cut later, you typically would choose outside. So that way the relief not only clears the intricate details of your design, but clears just past it as well. So that way the entire part is clear. And then we have ramping. What ramping does is it allows your bit to enter at a slope or gradual angle rather than plunging straight down. 
And this is really handy to reduce the strain or stress on your bit whenever you're machining a harder material like metal. So you can set a rather small ramping distance, like 10 millimeters, and a fixed angle of anywhere between 3 and 20 degrees typically works well, as well as a starting height of 1, just for some general good parameters to work around. After calculating this toolpath, you'll see that we have our toolpath generated where our bit will follow the contours of our design. You'll also notice that this toolpath goes all the way down to the bottom of our model. So if I just hide the toolpath right here, you'll see that the dog face is kind of on this little flat coin. And you'll notice that my tool comes all the way down to the bottom of my part as a relief. Now, instead of doing this, you may want to consider using a contour cut to actually cut your part out, which is a bit more efficient and a quicker way to do that, and also allows you to enable something like tabs. So if you don't want to machine all the way down to the bottom of the model, we can come back to this parameter we saw earlier called max depth. This will actually set a maximum depth for machining. So for example, if I set a maximum depth of three millimeters and then recalculate, you'll now see that this relief only comes down to a depth of three millimeters, which in the case of my model is just the surface of the coin. So in this case, now the dog part of the coin will be carved, and then I can go back and cut the coin out using a contour path, which again is a little bit more efficient, a little bit quicker, and allows us to enable tabs. Now I mentioned earlier the difference between a roughing and finishing pass. So this large bit, this 3.175 millimeter end mill, will not really give me a fine precision detail carving of this dog face. It'll remove a lot of material and I'll re remove it rather quickly and efficiently, but I won't get a nice clean design like what I have here. So what I can then do is add another bit, a more detailed bit, like for example, an engraving bit, such as a 0.2 millimeter engraving bit, which my parameter is set to be for brass. And for this engraving bit, I can choose to enable step down if I'd like, or I can choose to disable step down for the finishing pass, as I would have already cut right down to the material using my larger bit, depending on whatever size that bit was, which would determine how close it could of course get to your design. So enabling step downs for the finishing pass isn't necessarily required, it depends on how much material your finishing pass will need to remove as it works through creating this design. You can of course change any of your feeds and speeds off of the default parameters and assign your tool number to be different depending on where it's loaded. And then the strategies would all be the same as your first pass that you've already created. If you want the finishing pass to have different settings or strategies than your roughing pass, you would need to actually create two relief tool paths rather than combining your bits into a single toolpath like this. If I recalculate, you'll now see that the toolpath gets much closer around the face of the dog, and that's because the roughing pass, all these step downs will be performed with the larger bit, and then the finishing bit will then come in and follow the specific contours of this design based upon whatever was missed using the roughing bit. So this will create a really nice relief around this dog model using a 3D relief toolpath, which works very similar to the rotation relief toolpath if you were doing something like this on a fourth axis module rather than in a three axis configuration. As mentioned earlier, if you wanted to cut this relief part out, you might consider creating a three dimensional contour. And to create a 3D contour toolpath as we look in our other videos, you can select your model and actually generate a 2D path to follow along. With this 2D path generated, I could then of course set my feeds, my speeds, my strategy, and then enable tabs to hold on to my part. And that lets me create a nice outline perimeter cut using a contour toolpath around my relief. And of course, if you wanna learn more about 3D contours, check out our other tutorials and guides where we dive deeper into all of these settings. But now you know how to use MakeCaraCam to work with STL files to create three-dimensional reliefs and different types of projects in your design. Of course, stay tuned for more tutorials and guides on the Make Care channel and Wiki site, and thanks for watching.